So our, our second speaker is uh, Luis Correa. Um, he's gonna he's gonna talk to us about the the distribution of palindromes in a in a in the genome of a virus. He uh, he analyzed uh, the genome using R. Hi everyone, my name is Luis Correa. I'll be presenting evaluating clusters of palindromes using the statistical software R um, under the direction of uh, Mr. Guillermo Garza. Okay, so we're gonna start with synopsis. Um, this is just basically the overview of what I'm going to talk about, the introduction, the research approach that we took, the R exploration, our discussion, um, future directions, acknowledgements, and references. Okay, so this is the introduction. First, I want to talk about uh, the origin of human cyto, uh, cytomegal, uh, cytomegalovirus. Cyto is Greek for cell. Megalovirus is just Greek for large. So this is just a, a large cell uh, of a large virus cell. And uh, Robert H. actually first discovered it, uh, discovered a large cell in, in 1881, but then Smith, Rowe, and Weller for the following years, 1956, 1956, and 1957, they, they decided to uh, isolate the human uh, CMV strain so that we can actually categorize it now. Um, just a uh, more detail about it is uh, HCMB is actually part of the herpes uh, herpes uh, family and this family is just generally identified as herp herpes virus. The effects of, uh, of HCMB is that 60 to 70 percent of the adults in industrialized countries and almost 100 100 percent in emerging countries to get the actual disease actually here in the United States we're more prone to get the disease by body liquid, like by body liquids, meaning sexually transmitted disease, or by uh, transfusion, blood transfusion, or breast, uh, breast cancer. Um, this is a, li a, a lifelong uh, burning of antigenic T cell virus surveillance, which means that it attacks the immune system and make it makes the actual uh, the person who the person who has the virus. Uh, lower its immune system. So I explained the mobility of the actual virus, which is uh, it can be transferred to, it is presumed to transfer to bodily fluids, but they still haven't uh, figured out the actual way of transmission. And then the origin of uh, a replication is, is the main factor that I want to talk about. This origin of replication is where the sequence is generally uh, initiated uh, from the virus, and that's what me and Doc, uh, me and Mr. Garza were trying to do. We we're trying to use R to figure out uh, the probability of getting the original replication. Uh, replication. So, through a stat a stats book manual that uh, Mr. Garza gave me, we went through a section that entails the the study that they that that they did that they did, um, and then we gathered a, a certain size of n that allowed us to actually uh, use that in to uh, replicate the, the data that they did. So here, um, here is my research our research approach. Our research approach was uh, we did a reproducible research, which just means that we were trying to reproduce the entire experiment. But we also applied the clean room method, um, also known as the Chinese wall, which means that we're trying to protect its original data set without trying to uh, without trying to infringe any of the copyrights of the actual data. Um, and then we use uh, the R software so we can actually create uh, multiple uh, sequences so we can uh, so we can see uh, how probable uh, how powerful it is to actually get the original replication for the virus. Um, we uh, we're using R to actually illustrate tables, strip charts, histograms, and descriptives uh, uh, various descriptives. So this is the R exploration. So what we did is that we first created the variable that contains four letters uh, that we needed, which is the A, the C, and the T, and the G. So from here, we recreated this HCMB genome with the specific N, and in the bottom, I can't point, but um, here, this is the N that we used, 235,646 uh, uh, samples. And from here, we created this variable that allows us to actually um, it, uh, it allows us to create a uh, the 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 variable that we're comparing to HCMB. 
but because of this sequence, we had to concatenate the the new sequences without spaces because it was reading it with spaces as we created the uh, the variable. And in the bottom, it says the procedure was done for original genome as well. Here we use the biostring library to make the DNA string out of the new variable. Then we decided to find the palindromes out of our new uh, newly created uh, sequence. Palindromes are just words that you can uh, write uh, forwards and write backwards, or read backwards and forwards. An example, and a famous example that uh, Mr. Garza gave me was race car. Race car can be uh, written as race car, and then if you read it backwards, it'll still be the same, race car. So uh, we, we tried to find the palindromes within a sequence. Uh, because uh, because of, uh, of the manual, it, it entailed that they uh, they remove certain palindrome, uh, palindromes less than 10. So that's what we did as well. We created a new variable that removed the the, palindrome, the, palindromes, the palindromes that were less than 10. And we called it n palindromes, n palindromes too, so new palindromes. And this was as well done for the HCMB data. So here are the tables that we created for the HCMB and the palindromes. So this is the syntax that we use for R. Um, just uh, just a point of increase, not point of inquiry, but just saying it. Um, we were using Beamer in R, which is a cool function that I found out. I didn't know that we can use Knitter with R, you know, and put it put the actual syntax within the PowerPoint presentation. That's one of the things that Mr. Garts actually showed me. It was a neat thing and I really loved it. But anyways, going back, this is the table for the, the HEMB palindrome. So here we see that uh, 10 um, palindromes that were size 10, there was 234. And then there was 25. Uh, there was a size of 25 palindromes, but there was only one of, of those palindromes. But for the table, the only reason why it is 18 is because uh, I haven't moder I hadn't I haven't uh, made the the actual syntax to only read uh, a certain uh, a certain sequence because every time we pass it through R, it changes the number uh, the 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 sequence that we get. So this can be 18 at one point, but in another it can be 21, or the highest it could be 25, and Okay, so this is the strip charts. Uh, I was having some problems with <laughs> labeling the strip charts and putting them in the middle, but Mr. Garza is gonna help me, uh, try to help me later on. But this is the, what the strip chart would be if, uh, if, if they were um, compared to each other. So here we have um, a, large, uh, a large cluster of the actual palindromes in the CM uh, HCMB data. But the randomly created, uh, the randomly created one, wasn't as uh, didn't show as much cluster in the same, um, in in the same um, um, sample size. So out of like a thousand here, you can see a cluster, but over here it's not as uh, it's not as defined as it is here. This is how uh, this is another uh, a frequency table that we show where the where we can find the palindromes through the newly uh, newly created uh, palindromes s uh, the sec2 so here this is just an example of where uh, the location of the random genome but then if we change it to the next one which is the actual uh, so we see here how it's right there so we see the frequencies the highest was a little less than 40 uh, for probably well, I would say like nine, 90,000 um, um, sequences right here. So, and that's why R is so amazing because you can do this this type of functions, you know, with just little ease. But all right, like if you know if you know what if you know what you're doing, <laughs> yeah. The GenBank is a national um, national institute of health database where we get the the actual genome data. Uh, uh, where we got the actual genome data. Um, so this is where they say that the origin of replication might be. So uh, we now go to our discussion. So we can kind of approximate the origin of replication um, through randomly created uh, uh, sequences. Um, and then using R allowed us to create this, uh, these cases and compare them, uh, compare each other, each of them with, with ease. 
So that's one of the basic like awesome features about R that allows you to do uh, uh, several comparisons uh, on each other. And also that allows you to do uh, PowerPoints. Uh, so you have here. And so the feature directions, uh, we would try to move along through more random sequences, and then we're trying to find the closest palindromes that were analyzed in the HCMB data with a random variable. So, uh, and there's much more things that we want to do, but uh, we're trying to do uh, what we can at this point. Um, so acknowledgments, I want to thank this uh, uh, people and programs. I want to thank Mr. Guillermo Garza for actually, you know, guiding me through uh, through a lot of R. The R users group for allowing me to present here uh, in this uh, in this mini um, Matt Projects course because <laughs> uh, without Matt Project the Matt Projects course I wouldn't be able to present here. Uh, the Stat Stat Labs Mathematical Statistics through Application Book, which uh, is the book where we got the actual uh, experiment from, and then the Gemback, which we introduced earlier, is the National Institute of Health Genetic Sequence Database. And without that, we wouldn't be able to get the HTMB data, uh, data that we use. This is just the references that are used for the actual slides. And uh, any questions? So, what was the title It was evaluating clusters of polydromes using the statistical rule. Any more questions? Thank you.